Okay, I'm going to try to do a very short video with the Sony here because the file size is humongous. It take me all all night to edit this. Um, I got I'm changing over the diodes temporarily. I connected in uh, with clip leads before the 1N 4007, and um, come to find out, there's supposed to be a hundred ohm resistor in here, not a 22. So somebody had worked on this. And somebody had changed, uh, like I say, did some work on this. And this is the um, selenium rectifier, okay? That's the blue one I was telling you about. There's no markings on it whatsoever. And the one that has the little red dot on it. Hang on a minute. This is a super tiny selenium rectifier this is the one I was saying I had the little red dot on it the lighting is terrible here I got all my lights on in the shop and I still can't get it illuminated because the camera is shading but anyways that's the, the rectifier this is where I took it out of right here it feeds the capacitor the filter cap I'm gonna put clip leads on and put a 1N4007 on here now I put this little guy on my ohm meter and I got seven point something meg ohms. On the diode check it was sky high. In other words, uh, it's almost like an open circuit. Okay, what's been throwing me off is this resistor here. I just found a marking on it of 22 ohms. I measured 24 ohms, so that's where you see it marked there. So that's where the mysterious 22 ohm resistor was. The other one, which was 22 ohms, the fusible one, was here in place of the 100 ohm resistor on X2. X2 is now a 1000, 1N4007 with a 100 ohm resistor in a 5 watt in place of a 22 ohm fusible. I'm now getting 163 volts on this 160 volt rated cap, but like I said before, I'm getting a negative, of course. That's just negative 160 volt. 165 volt source so uh, but the original cap was rated at 150 so anyways uh, putting this hundred in here gave me a little less stress on this here uh, I'm gonna remove this 22 ohm or 24 is what I measured I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna put a 1 1 in 4007 diode in here and this goes directly to the switch now, after I hooked this part up, I was still getting a sawtooth, so uh, I'm going to have to live with it, but I will change out the diode. This radio is almost useless. It just, just does not pick up anything. The AM band drops dead right about here down, and the cap tuning cap, cap is not shorted. So I don't know. All the tubes test good, so I don't know what the hell it is. But aircraft seems to be the only thing that's really working on this. Uh, but let me change the diode. I'm, I'm getting, as I showed you, 133 volts on that. So I'm going to probably have a lot more than that when I get that replaced. So when I replaced this little guy with a uh, 1N4007 and a 100 ohm resistor instead of the 22 ohm, I should have more volts. Maybe the radio will work better. So yes, it calls for a 22 ohm resistor, but that's a um, selenium, which has a tremendous voltage drop. Now, so we're going to put that in, and then we're going to have a 100 ohm resistor here, and that'll be the input filter, which in my case is a 60 microfarad, not a 50. Like I say, I'm working on a schematic that's made for 
this model and where am I here this is my model here so that's what's been throwing me off on this I didn't see a marking on this and I just spotted it it's always on the back side never fails a matter of fact, I put this 100 ohm resistor in and I put it in ass backwards so I had to mark 100 ohms on it so I'll know or who, somebody else, whoever gets the radio, will know. So now that's taken care of so the 165 negative source is taken care of but I'm still getting a sawtooth. But we're not going to stop and give up because we got to change out this little tiny itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny <laughs> selenium rectifier, which is a, a low-current, 130 milliamp rated, is what it is in the parts list. Now, you could probably pause the video, maybe. With this camera, I can get you a pretty good close-up, and you can get a look at the uh, power supply as best I can. Uh, get it to you so you can see what I'm doing so um, this set this circuit here is all set that's already been replaced the uh, 1N4007 and the 100 ohm resistor is your 20 microfarad capacitor now we're working up here so we're going to be doing that and we'll come back alright here's the 22 ohm resistor that I just clipped out and I did not clip the lead short because there's nothing wrong with that resistor it's just that I need a higher value so we're going to put in a 100 ohm resistor 5 watt but unfortunately the leads are a little short that's just the way it was when I got it I don't remember where I got it but it's brand new so we're gonna have to add a hook and pinch um, an extension on the lead because it will not reach and I will put heat shrink over it or spaghetti tubing whichever I got I get my hands on so that resistor will go from here where I clipped the other one out and uh, I can't see a damn thing here all right we'll, we'll get it hooked up I can't see nothing I gotta get the magnifying glass on it Oh, what a job. I had to keep pumping solder in this. It went down and bridged the other side, so I snipped it off, and I broke the terminal. Well, we're just going to leave it that way. What a hell of a job I had getting that to solder to take. I wrapped it around the terminal, and it wouldn't take on the, uh, the lead that I extended on this. And the lead take solder well but it wouldn't around here story of my life well I'm not replacing that terminal strip I'll just put some damn glue in there or something so the diode goes from here to here but what I'm gonna do now is so I don't make this video too long is I'm gonna put a clip lead on here this is the 100 ohm resistor that replaced the 22 and uh, the other end uh, I think is here I'm sorry, I can't see with just the reading glasses. Uh, I'm going to put a the 1N4007 positive on this end, of course. Um, AC side goes here. And this goes to the switch, of course. So 120 volts or 110 volts goes in here. Comes out here. So I'm going to do that and put the scope on it and see if I still get a sawtooth. I'm sure I will. But that's all I can do. After that, I don't know. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because... In the future, I may change the filter caps, but if I'm not going to get rid of the uh, sawtooth, why change the filter caps? So let's do that, and I'll come back. Believe it or not, only getting 125 volts instead of 133. We still got the sawtooth, but I knew we would. So I wasted two diodes for nothing, and two mostly the two 100 ohm, which is the only two I have in the shop. 5 watt resistors makes no difference. 
still got the sawtooth. So uh, the terminal is hanging in the air because it's broken. We got the 1N4007 sitting here. The AC is coming in here. We got the probe on the positive side of the diode, the DC side. Scope probe. And the voltmeter. So, at this point in time, I'm not changing the capacitor. I bridged them out. It didn't make any difference except to reduce the amplitude of the sawtooth, but it did not take the sawtooth away. It just reduced the amplitude about 50%. So, so that's it. Um, I'm done with it. Um, this resistor is a five watt, and it you can't even put your finger on it. It's too hot. The one that was in here. Probably a 10 water. I measured for, uh, 24 ohms, that's why I marked that, but that is 22. So, um, I may, I have to go and get one. I don't, my resistor inventory, uh, I don't have very good selection. I do have some power resistors, but they're, um, they're more like this size here. A little bit big and a little awkward. Um, probably have to go to a 10 watt anyways. And then I'll have to do something about this terminal strip there that just hangs off. And normally the diode would connect from here to this point over here. But anyways, I'm going to end this video and be all night editing this or rendering it. So uh, that's probably... That's it. I'm turning it off. I'm done with it. Thanks for watching.